Hi, Fabio. It's later in the day there, right? Where you are? What time is it there? Is it like 11? Maybe noon? I don't know what time zone you're in. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. All right, that's working. Is my audio coming through here? Just to make sure. Okay. 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 Let's get to these questions first. Here's Marvin. Hello, Hello Professor Casey. Casey. Hey. Um, this is Marvin Counts. So, what I'm what trying to do is get this clock to tear. tear. Like, I'm, I'm trying, trying to everything that you demonstrated in your uh, tutorial, tutorial video. video. Um, so, so when I uh, rewind, rewind this back, back and press play, play. Watch. watch. See, See it, it just go right, right under, under and it doesn't, it doesn't tear, tear the cloth. Um, um, like, like I, I try, try so many ways, ways to, to get it to, to you know, tear, tear right here. here. Like, like right, right here, this is the focal, focal point. point. Right here. Right here. So, so, so like so I mark these, like I know that um, um, I would have I to put, put the paint, paint. Uh, um, the, the paint, paint tool. tool. Right, the vertex map, that's right. Right here is that. In here, here the, the vertex, vertex map. map. Yep, that's so right. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and it's, it's already so there, there, but. but it's not, not it's, it's, it's still, still not tearing. Not tearing. I'm, not I'm not sure, sure what I'm doing wrong. wrong. Maybe. I end up animating that tear parameter. So that it's, it really got pretty weak as soon as it made impact. Let's see if that shows up in my recents. I also had way more topology. Back to that, you know, topology matters. Yeah. Uh, so when the thing made impact with the um, finish line ribbon, you know, I, I turned up the um, tearing. I turned up or turned down? I think I turned, yeah, down. The tearing strength, so that you know it really just all it needed to do was make contact. So you did the first two parts, right? You did put the vertex map on there so that it um, tears the right part. But uh, yeah, like I said, um, try to use the physics where you can. But ultimately, you know, you're going to need to keyframe things. Um, you know, trying to set them up so that they work sort of as is. Ultimately, find it's better to keyframe. Hence that um, one parameter for trying to get my zoom running. Um, yeah, so I animated this down like uh, a couple frames before the thing made contact with this part of the line. So that's the last part you missed there. That was not that was not tearing. That's Marvin. Hi. Hi. So, so, quick, quick question. question. What's, What's the, the best, best way to stop the flag from um, being stuck like, like this? this? I'm not, not sure, sure what's, what's happening, happening there. there. Yeah, I think when I increase the resolution of the, not the resolution, but the accuracy of the sim, it looked a lot better.
So we'll give the plane more subdivisions. We'll grab the cloth, grab the cloth belt. And we'll select the points. There we go. And let's shift shift the axis. For some reason I didn't save this one last week. So we'll grab this one, shift C, axis center. And then we'll just wave it around with the vibrate tag. And a th weird thing with the vibrate tag, just sort of zeroing it out at the beginning, so that when you rewind, it does start at this point. Cool. Now, let's see, mine's not getting caught too much. The other thing we did was put a collider tag so it doesn't go through the pole itself. Cool. And now we got our cloth. And if we want to change the simulation here, so let's look at this. In our help, this was. Yeah, our sub steps. So I'm going to double both of these and see where we're at. So we'll go to 40 and 2, and then run it again. Let's see. And let's make sure the cloth doesn't have, yeah, there's no stickiness. We have friction. Let's see, something is not holding on to this.
Um, so let's go back to trying the other thing, the other main parameter that makes the most difference, which isn't a parameter at all, just the topology. So if this is much, let's subdivide this once and see if we have a little bit better results. That's good. Let's look at the collider. Bounce, friction. I'm going to turn the friction down. There's no stick on the collider. That's good. There we go. Yeah, so once again, guiding principle topology matters, right? Because um, even without even adjusting any of this, I'll turn this way back down to where it was originally. Yeah, if the. Um, If the polygons, it's only simulating, you know, as if these are little things connected by, like, connectors that have springs attached, right? So um, if there's too much room between each vertex for things that are making contact, things seem to get stuck, like, in between each one. And so what did I do here that worked? I Let's see if the simulation even matters here. I'll put it back to where it was originally, 20 and 1, so we can isolate exactly what works. Yeah, it's fast and doesn't get stuck. Um, I increased the topology here, increased the topology here. And so now, you know, it's not getting stuck on, on this one. Let's actually upload two questions. So, if the if a soft body or a you know piece of cloth is getting stuck on something else, increase the sub D. Right now, putting a, putting the object in a subdivision surface, that uh, that will smooth it, but it won't change the sim because the sim works um, on the underlying thing. I guess it would change the sim if you put the tag on the sub D surface, right? The, the tag is which piece of geometry is actually getting entered into the simulation here. In that case it would. So here, I made another one. like so, and we'll make it some sort of usable size. There we go. And we'll hit C on that. And now, if I want to create more subdivisions here, I'll do that. All right, so I'll put the plane in the sub-D surface. If we don't want the rounded corners, you just change from the Catmull clock to Clark to one of these is going to be, yeah, just square. Or open subdivision is just straight up subdividing, no rounding. And so now, um, 
No, nope, still wouldn't work in this case. You'd still have to hit C on it. Because you still gotta select the points for the belt to let it know where the belt is. Um, so that you could do, you know, as a way to subdivide without the subdivide command. That would be fine. But you still need the um, belt and tell it which thing is running into the belt and then set some points here, 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 and here, set, there we go. Let's see if it doesn't get stuck even later on. Yeah, not getting stuck. So, greater subdivision there without it selected. Keeps it from getting stuck. If it were to come in here and ch -ch -ch, let's see if we can prove that now. If we come in here and ch -ch 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 -ch, decrease the number of subdivisions in kind of a hacky way by just putting it in a remesh. There we go. I think this works. I did this the other day. Yeah. So things get stuck there. We need to hit C on this, so we need to reset those points. That's part of the reason this isn't working. So now, grab those points. Cool. So, increasing sub D. Let me see where your other question is. So hey. one question um, about the axis center. The the cylinder is not working with the axis center for some reason. I'm trying to execute this and it's not applying at all. Even if I hit Alt Zero, um, do you know why this is? Yeah, because it's a primitive. You can't change the anchor point on a primitive, right? Whatever it is. Um, the primitives are like presets, you know, like they're just totally set. And so if I run the axis center here, shift C, axis center, and do you know, anything with this, th nothing happens. And once it's no longer primitive, and execute that in object mode, now it moves it to, you know, wherever I said. So that's, that's, that's easy. That's what's going on there. Cool. Okay, so we got both of those. Uh, 
out everyone for this week. I just had a couple of things. I was having an issue with the rope tag not working with the ropes I made. And uh, I think it was because I had the, I had the rope tag on the sweep and I... Yeah, yeah, I think the rope is only going to work on the spline. It's not, right, you you make, you build the geometry off of, off of the spline and the spline simulator. Polygon, but I tried it again later and I put the rope tag on the spline and that's when it started working correctly. Yep, exactly. So I think that's what my issue was there. Exactly. And then also, uh, while I was working on the assignment, I uh, figured out that uh, in, in the material, you can uh, use a layer instead of like just a noise or just a color, and you can use the layer to combine different noises or colors together. And you could use uh, blend modes with uh, between the between the different noises to uh, blend them together. But uh, that's all I have uh, for this week. Thank you. Yeah. So the layer shader, you know, is like the old version of being able to use nodes. You can do that in, in any channel, right? If you hit layer. Then you click here. Then you have essentially just kind of like a mini Photoshop right here. But this is definitely, yeah, you know, this has been around for a while and sort of fallen out of favor. Whereas, like, just using the nodal compositing is sort of the direction things are going. But it stays in there. Um, so for simple stuff like that, or you can combine any any shaders and or images here in multiple layers. When you're creating material uh, that's going to be for a viewport render, but you need the you need the different uh, PNGs or XLRs that that came out of Substance Feed. Mm -hmm. Is I try to do it with Node, like to create a Node material from the material right, right there, like from the, instead of just standard, I want I found the node yeah. material. A and then you drag it into each of the channels, like color, do you know what I'm saying? So, so, so pulling up, you know, the, pulling up the material itself, a node material, I'm able to use the PNGs in the color channel and in the, in the displacement and normal, but I couldn't find a metallic. So how do you do it? No. You don't. Yeah, uh, I mean, didn't it? I thought it just looked, I mean, the viewport, right? You know, like, I'm using it for quick quick stuff. You know, it's not, well, I, I just don't. I, I just, satin, right? And, and it doesn't exist in the Yeah, I mean, the viewport is the viewport. It's like, it's just not, like, it's the real time renderer. So, you know, it's just, things are going to look relatively shiny, you know, depending on the things. Like, it's just not, you're, you're not going to achieve visual equality between Redshift and the viewport render, like, no. at all. Um, and, yeah, like, the that's why Substance Painter has all those preset outputs. Yeah. Like, like, the real answer to the question is you have to go back and re-export everything out of Substance Painter to have a yeah. correct mapping structure. I did, but Using which preset? Do a simple way with a viewport, and not have to do that by, by um, in, how do you import? An, an yeah, it doesn't have a metallic. It doesn't have metallic. Like it's like uh, it's yeah. a different. It it's matter. a different shading model. Like there's like you push push the roughness and reflectance to a sort of degree. Yeah. So how would you import a material? You know, I like uh, you know. I, I thought yours looked. Mm -hmm. When where did you send me the table? Was it on Slack or? Email. I can't remember. You, when you sent me the table, because that was yeah, that was in already in Redshift, and that was, the table one was um, yeah, already in Redshift. right. Because that because that, but when I opened it, I sent it, it in your email. Yeah, here it is. Let me open it again. It's cool email. Um, 
I thought it looked like as good as. I was talking about the one I just did last night and today. Right, but I mean, if we come in with like something that was set up for Redshift, I thought that one just came in correctly. Let me look again. I'll open it here. But the one, like, you know, the VMOD library, the fabric stuff, I really like to use them, like, track to it, you know, buy, buy them with the points and all that. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to use them for this. And so how do I import that? Just the, I mean, I would just do it with the color for now. Yeah, because, I mean, you're, as far as, like, getting, you, there's not much you do beyond that in the viewport. Like, just drag the color into the color, and that's at least going to give you the pattern on the surface. And I would I would just call it a day at that. Yeah, just bring the color into the color, and, yeah, that would be, uh, that would be where I would go. So there is not a way to import that fabric into a... You have to put a substance painter and then export the No, in Redshift, yeah, you bring in all four channels if you're going to use the Redshift render. But yes. like if you use the viewport render, just drag it into the color channel. Yeah, because the those those four channels that they're going to give you, those are perfect for the Redshift material, but not for the viewport material. I just didn't really see any way to to bring any of it in, even the, the color. I would just I would just do. The color just goes right, right here. You would just load it into this, wh whatever the, the image in is. The, uh, file, the little file or yeah, the load okay. image, and then, okay. then whatever, wherever the color material is. Okay. But let me let me open up this one because I thought this one, when I did open it up, it looked okay. But let me go back. I think I get that out of there. Okay, so if I do this. Yeah, okay, so everything comes in here, because this is all set up for Redshift. And if we just switch, yeah, that gives me that. Um, No, I'm doing a viewport right now. I just switched to viewport render. So so we're good. No, they were coming in black because of that text folder issue that we talked about yeah. before. But the but here, the the only th the thing that might make this look a little bit better is just um, setting both of the just the you know, like it's still using that pretty smushed uh, reduced resolution. So if you just say yeah. Just try to use the better resolution, right. and then, the and boom, there we go. And so now, yeah, if I wanted to, you know, I just switched it here to viewport, let's say geometry only, and and I'm good. Yeah, so they're trying to make that as painless as possible. So, yeah, you you totally have it done correctly. This is like set up really great for Redshift, and now you know just to get the quick preview output, all you need to do is switch over here, and you're good. I want to I want the soft sim that I was working on just didn't didn't 
didn't seem to work that way. Yeah, if they're black, then that's that's just the file issue. Like it's not finding the file for some for whatever reason. But this, like this this one's totally set up good, and you're 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 good to go. But the like for whatever um, if I were to you know if you had stuff coming from uh, like just loading something into the color or whatever that would be like But, I mean, this is all good. All the stuff we did last semester, like you've got it yeah. set up correctly for Redshift to just bring it in. Mm -hmm. And to do the fast render, you just need to switch because it's good. And to, you know, make sure that the this is not set to the lowest setting right. or the default, because then all your stuff will, and, and will I, show up. But at, at that moment, for me, for my thing, I wasn't even after the material because I was doing the soft set with a different material. But I couldn't even access the table. I remember, you know, whatever happened, it, it was a redshift issue, mm -hmm. but it didn't end up, I didn't end up needing the redshift because of uh, the, 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 the table part that I was working on. I didn't post the table. Oh, just this is trying this to use that table with the soft sim that I was creating for mm -hmm. a completely different fabric, and it, that's what I was not able to get to the table. It seemed like the table file was bound by the Redshift issue, and I had to un uninstall, reinstall Redshift, and then reopen 23. But once you did that, you're good, right? It's been working? Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, Hello everyone. Hello from Brazil. Um, I, Hello. I'm having a little bit of a trouble when I'm connecting this object. When I'm doing the, the connection of this object, um, it's going back to the the first state, um, and I'm gonna show you what's going on. I think I ended up using current state to object, if I remember correctly. And I click on the cloner, and then I connect objects here. For some reason, it goes back to the the, the first state of the the simulation, and I don't know what I'm doing, what I am doing wrong. So um, please let me know. Yep, I used current state, right? I I I don't have a good answer for you as far as what is happening behind the scenes. Connect objects. If connect objects. I mean, just the tactical approach at this point should be if connect objects doesn't do what you want, try current state to object. Between those two commands, I can get what I want, usually. Uh, I haven't deciphered exactly why, uh, what the situation is there. I, I haven't come up with a rule as to why when one and not the other. Connect objects works in like I said, 90% of the situations, but if connect objects doesn't go to current state to object, and that gave me the pile of fabric, and that was good. So just just that one thing. So Fabio, if you have it open, try that. That should that should do it. I believe I I did that because I remember running into that thing in particular. Is this the same one? Who is this? Um, so, so one question, question. Um, about, about the, the access, access center. center. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we did that one. 
cool. Okay. And... Okay, here's Carmen's. Cool. Great. Yeah, I mean, this is a good start. The, the again the viewport renderer is super fast. Um, Carmen, you really want to go through the thing to set up the default, and then you're rendering these at. Maybe this is just the one you made for Slack. Like what what resolution is this? Okay, so this is probably just the one you made for Slack. Okay, yeah. Um, you can render the viewport at a high, the resolution is not going to slow down that significantly, I mean, at all. It would still be less than a second of frame kind of thing. Cool. I mean, you're on the right track here. This is kind of what we were talking about for, I mean, you left in a lot of the things where, you know, we use the sim to create a shape, which you don't really need to do um you know for this week we're gonna put you know pick uh, some of them to put together into like an actual scene so you're getting kind of some of the gist of how these work that's good but now you know thinking about how to make them you know look like something but i've been fo all the stuff i've been doing here i've been focusing on getting the simulation and stuff but you need to l leverage all of the other skills to to make it look perhaps like a an interesting scene of some kind yeah and it looks like these all may be simulating as well remember once you do the current state to object on these then you want to take the tag off so that they stop you stop spending resources simulating the stuff that's just sitting there on the floor that's the whole idea and then when we did the ball pit they were not squishy, you know, it was like, you know, what you would find, the, the hard plastic things. So that was like rigid body being thrown into there, into those things. You got the right kind of setup now on that. That's good. And then, yeah, we talked a lot about making this look cinematic and, you know, the, the artistic side of doing this kind of render, right? Uh, sense of scale, small ones, large ones, all that kind of thing. But you're getting the basic technique stuff rolling. That's good. So this is the Christo scene that you oh, yeah. posted? I did want to put it up because I had some questions about it. Hey, I'm Christo. I'm sure you know Christo. 
Yeah, the... I mean, I'm sure there's several documentaries. I mean, the one I watched most recently was... Uh, what was that? There's, oh. there's several documentaries, but the one where it's... Um, it's like in California, and it's stretching yes. from some town <laughs> to to the to the ocean. Um, and he's they've enlisted, you know, what seems like the entire town to also um, so make that happen. When you look underneath it, I had to cut away the curtain, and it's still even putting a the collider hanger tag on the landscape. It still went through. The curtain is still going through. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. dropping down. Oh, I didn't, let's see, I can't remember if I dropped it down or I just, oh, I just, I created the plane and then I, you know, put the anchor points and the dresser tag and set the points. But, you know, it still hits it and goes right through. That's one, one question. Um, let's see. And then, of course, the materials tag, awful. I mean, I couldn't get that's not a sim issue. That's just, you know, why am I not able to make that landscape tag, the landscape apply in a way that makes sense in terms of scale? It was like a wallpaper on a mountain. Um. That's the second question. But in, in terms of the sim question, I wanted to make it more like pleats because that. That's cool and billowy, but I was looking to sort of do more pleats. Would I, would I actually be having to drag the points across the uh, cable to do that? I mean, that and more like the curtain we discussed, well, I think. A little more somewhere between where, where it is is where it is is pretty accurate for what he does or did. I I got it got better when I changed the thickness of the cloth to thicker. But still, I think, you know, to art direct it, to yeah. have more. Th this thing. Yeah. So, so you would have done, you would have started with the spline? And yeah. Then yeah. It? Yeah. Yeah. This okay. is, uh, the, you know, this is kind of what we did, the, the some okay. of the curtains, right? So, like this, and then, yeah, extruded it. And then, uh, and then when you're creating that, at what point do you use the subdivision circuit? Well, I th it's probably going through the thing because it doesn't have enough polygons. So let's look. Again, try to get these evenly distributed, so uniform. There we go. And so. I mean, let's just see if it goes through. So I'll put a cloth tag on this. And
Yeah, mm, this is way denser. So it's able to. Doesn't look like it goes through at all. So it helps to have more polygons in this case where you're. Yeah, yeah, because that's what happened to Celeste there at the beginning, right? They were further apart, they said they got stuck on stuff or they go through stuff. So yeah, this I means kind of running through it there, but if I were to make it thicker somehow. No, the pleats come from drawing the spline. You know, like, oh, okay. you know, like I did, I did that yeah. at the beginning, yeah. And then the fact it doesn't go through is having more polygons. So. And if you look at my tag, I have the, the belt tag has to go on the table or on the curtain? Um, I think I had a word. I think you want it on the curtain with the, with the dresser and the fixed points. Yeah, the, the, the belt goes on the cloth. Like like you put a belt, I think of it like, you know, where does the belt go? On your pants, right? So like it goes on here, right? Not not here or here. The the, the cloth, the, the tag references the thing you, you want a belt on uh, that, that you're, that you're you know, attaching to, but the belt tag goes on the thing. Yeah, so you got the, the, ta the belt tags in the wrong place. Let's uncache this. Clear cache on that. And so here, I'll turn this off. I don't know why it's down so low, too. When I created it, it's right on the cable. Yeah. So the belt goes here, and here's the cable, right? So uh, cable goes here. This is the thing we're belting onto. And then you have some points selected here already. And so back here, set. That's all connected. And so if the cable itself moved, or I guess we move the rig. You don't want it to. You don't want these to be long at the beginning. And so now you could sort of have it come to rest wherever you wanted the rig to be. But yeah, using you know drawing the pleats in before. Yeah, so that went back and forth like that. I tried to do it with the brush tool with soft selection. It, it, it got me to where I got, but it wasn't what I was looking for. Yeah, usually to get, you know, that, I mean, most of the time I'm doing curtains if I do this, right? So just to get that kind of like uh, thing. And then uh, what's the thing on the tie ring?
know, it's so it's a real mess back there because I was just trying to delete a lot of extra geometry. Yeah, I mean this. This sort of forest floor thing. I don't know. Like it has detail for sort of up close, but I don't, I don't think it's really great for 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 this. I guess I just would have to like to really do it. I just have to substitute it. Yeah. I mean, just not use that material. That that material doesn't strike uh -huh. me as like as as one to use. I mean, it seems like more of like a rock kind of thing. There's just too much contrast in that other pattern to have it not look, you know, wallpapery. Maybe we should make a whole another set of like, <coughs> maybe just the poly haven stuff that's set up for the viewport. Just so everybody can throw it in their thing, in their asset browser. I what, what, what I was hoping to get to was to do the assign it before to to current state to object with the Voronoi so I could have rubble down there. I just didn't get to it. Mm -hmm. that, because I know that stretching those polygons is, is also going to completely distort the pattern. So the ones in the back are all stretched, and I just stuck a new plane on top of that. Yeah. So that it wouldn't be stretched. It's like that's how you do all the traps. I mean, you're on the right track there, yeah. but yeah, the cloth tag goes on the the belt. piece that goes on the cloth. Yeah, the belt so tag. The belt and the cloth. Yep, yep. Go on okay. the go on the thing that's being simulated. Yep. And the material itself is beautiful. I'm just not. I guess you know, in a view, in a in a redshift, it would be beautiful. Yeah. It's just sort of what it is. Let's see, what the, that one, Fabio's getting some things in. Jesus. And Marvin. This one's Marvin's. 
He's got t-shirts. Cool. So, yeah, Marvin, reviewing. I mean, I th I think you know the difference between the viewport render and the standard render, but I'm not, I'm not sure if you do. Uh, like this one's a standard here, um, and then on these, right? Remember, the thing we can do in the viewport is just say geometry only, so that all the lines aren't there when you actually do the render. The sim stuff. Looks pretty good. The piles of t-shirts here, right? Again, like we've talked about this before, from an art direction standpoint, just like I guess suppose you got two different piles. If you have like you know three or so, that usually is enough. You got the this set up well. Um, yeah, when you start rendering the space stuff. You, the camera is pretty slow here, but it does move, you know, a huge amount compared to the size of things there. So I think a lot of your stuff here, Marvin, would be, if I had to give you some advice here, is use some reference more. I feel like you're just kind of eyeballing some things, whereas, like, you know, like, y you, you understand the technique to make the asteroid field and then take some time and be like, what does an asteroid field look like? Or what, do, what how people represented an asteroid field in the past to sort of like get more in the ballpark with, with that kind of thing. And then this one, the trick with this one was uh, to, not have the, to not have that, is to use that um, set, current, set uh, starting point tag, right? So in the bullet tag of your body, is that you know you go ahead and hit play, and let the blocks fall into the tower position, and once they're in the tower position, then you can press this, and then next time you start the sim right there, the set initial state. Next time you start the sim, then they start, and you don't have that falling down into the, into position, and then yeah, we kind of want this to fall over, like you know the whole. It's the whole idea here. And then, um, yeah, same thing. Even in the viewport render, the rounded corners, that's something that certainly does make a difference. If you're going to use the, the backdrop, like, I don't know if it makes sense to put leaves on the backdrop, right? In that it's like a dirt floor that then curves up. This is cool. This is an interesting idea. This is the one of your own design. So this gets caught in the fan. So yeah, a, a bunch of people did this with, like, um, you're, you're cutting right on the interesting part, right? Uh, yeah, let, let, let's see what happens yeah. there with that, right? Um, like, a bunch of you guys, like, why are we doing this? You know, make interesting movies, you know, essentially images. Like that's what we're doing here, right? So not we're not just running sims for the sake of running sims. And so, yeah, you're able to run the sim, but you gotta, you know, be an editor, be a director, and like like we wanna see what happens there with that. Yeah, it made contact, but you know, make the thing longer so it's you know, uh, you're so you're not cutting right on the action there. The balloon looks good. That you know, that one probably goes in a subdivision surface to make it look you know, less faceted there. This is this is good. You got the basic setup here. These up here, like if you extruded them out, if you pay attention when I did that, you know, I have this, and I did not extrude out a single polygon for the tassels, right? And I can tell that's what's going on here and here. Why? Because then this tassel would not be floppy. It, it would be like you taped, like you taped a piece of wood to the end of 
you know, like you made wood fingers or something, you know, that's not going to bend and taped them to the end of the arm here. Your tassel fingers need to have the same density of polygons as the whatever the rest of this uh, gas station guy is, right? And so the fingers need to look like this so that they themselves also, you know, do that there. And then this 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 should really be open there. Those things are almost always open. You can also put some tassel on on the head. You get to see that cool floppy guy hair effect. Good camera movement there. Cool. All right, good start, Marvin. Reference, reference, right? Take a take a break at some point. And ask yourself, what am I, what am I actually trying to do here? Right? You're getting some technique stuff, but sometimes I feel like you're missing missing the big picture. All right, that was M Marvin's. I need to get rid of that other folder there. Okay, so that was week three was was Marvin's here. Say Zeus. All right. Cool. That one, that felt good as far as like the camera following the, the action. Cool. And you certainly got the, this, you know, the simulation to do what you wanted. You got the setup here. Like you got the basic technique, but again, um, like this will be one of the ones I think everybody should put in their their reel here that we'll make. But you know, the going back and reviewing the stuff about scale. You know, it's not just the button pushing; it's the it's the image making as well um, that really makes this work. And then um, yeah, the scale in terms of the scale of the things. So having some big ones and some tiny ones helps this. And then also um, right. Why does this feel cheesy and not like it's in space? Because like there's no way you could photograph an entire asteroid belt, right? If you if you're far enough away that the whole asteroid belt would be contained within your view, you would not see it because it's you know because of the scale of what's going on there. But again, you don't need to be a space es expert to know these kind of things. You can just sort of um, maybe go back and look at look at some more reference, right? So reference with space is a little weird in that we only we only have so much, right? Like, quote unquote, real reference. But even going, I don't know if it even matters that much. There's also like the cultural language around representing space, you know, that wasn't real, quote unquote. You know, what happened? What's what's happened in the movies up until this point? You can all also use that to inform your sense of of what you're aiming at visually here. Um, cool. And then again. Anytime we have these massive scale things, we're not usually doing as much ease in and ease out, right? Like, because the thing is so big, it's just sort of like already in motion. But you got that working. This is good. So you got piles of stuff. I don't know what you're doing with the render here. I think you, you're trying to make it look cell shaded. That. Because you can't draw the lines in the viewport. Yeah, the the are you, uh, yeah. Let me know, Jose, on Slack. Are you using the art render, the cell shaded art render here? Because that that um, will not actually look cell shaded unless you that one's not going to work in the viewport render. This is cool. So you got you did the effect of like turning it on. 
And you did manage to subdivide those tassels, and so that works pretty well. And you got that there. And then this is like, like a person in a, uh, like one of those indoor skydiving things. I, th I think that's what we're going for here. That'd be, that would be interesting. If you're gonna use this one, maybe make those look a little bit more like fans, right? So yeah, we're focusing on the sim stuff, but I want you to leverage all your other, you know, I know everyone in here has had a semester of heavy duty modeling at this point. So leverage, leverage those skills. That's good. That's uh, Jesus up here. We went to Carmen, so we'll talk about that. So we got, that was Marvin's, that was Jesus. Here's Max. And let's unzip Celeste as well. Here's Max's movie. Cool. So Max, like, picking the low-hanging fruit as far as, like, he's got his viewport render set up, you know, and so this is able to do this. And cool, you got multiple, taking out multiple blocks. Well done. I mean, as an amateur Jenga player, uh, that move there, that's nonsense. Like, who's going to do that? <laughs> but you, you did, it's great. You did a really good job making this look good. And, you know, looking, making it look good quick, right? That's the idea with the viewport render. Is like, yeah, with making sure those boxes are checked and setting that as your default, then, you know, you can quickly mock up stuff. And, yeah, this, we all know now what, you know, really great ray traced rendering looks like. Um, but, you know, this... You know, quick a quick version of this. What makes it look good? You know, it took a little bit of time to make sure that the density of the wood made sense for the size of the block. Got the corners rounded, and then you know did a little bit more animation to make the whole thing work. Looks good. Can I just ask on that one? How, how I no, I'm not I'm not speed here. How did he? Was it a keyframe on that one block that triggered the? Thing to yeah, I mean, he just animated, you know, he hit C on the cloner, so he had access to each individual block. And then he yeah. animated those blocks that got pulled out. Yes. And, yeah, he pulled out one at the bottom, and so the whole thing fell over. And that one had the, whatever, I don't know. They all have simulation tags on them. I mean, he may have taken taken it off of these, but, you know, yeah, because even with the other ones, we see the sim happening. So yeah, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I don't think he's using the thing where you say on trigger. Like it was just live from frame one. And he's animating those, the blocks that come out, he's animating those with keyframes. And then, you know, he essentially triggers not with a checkbox, just by pulling out the block that's at the very bottom. And so that causes the whole thing just to fall over. Cool. Feels spacey. I would say pretty good. Uh, this, this is a good technique, having something pass in front of the camera. This would probably be you know, fuzzier if you're doing like a shallow depth of field thing but you know, it gives us a sense of space. I think you're trying to use some noise here to make the star background. Max has got the cinematic camera movement in each shot. He's even using his linear wipe in between scenes. Here we got our t-shirts. And he's using the fan thing, animating that. Get these arms. 
nice mylar balloon. Cool. Yeah, there's a whole... Ugh, now that I want to find it, I'm not going to be able to find it. Um, I'm going to take a break here in a minute. Yeah, so this is cool. Um, yeah, this like wiggly block thing. So these like foam blocks and then Max did something here to either animate the gravity globally or maybe he turned up the gravity, changed the gravity on each individual block. I don't know. Probably maybe just change, he animated the gravity in the scene to sort of make them go up and down here so that they hit all of this stuff. Cool. And, you know, you got like some sort of vibe for the visual design here with these things and, you know, you got your other pattern over there. Excellent. And here's Celeste. Good. You want to use that um, set initial position. And then, like we said with the other ones, you know, let's have it fall over. So when you're using the, the tile uh, in the viewport, the default settings for the tile look real fuzzy and kind of crummy. If you go into surfaces, tile, there we go, and zoop, there we go. And yeah, so we can make it more higher resolution by coming in here and doing the same thing. You know, say like, okay, this in the viewport, this should give like 2K. Okay, you see that that improves it slightly, but it still looks kind of like, I mean, usually the scale of it just sort of doesn't work, right? If you have these tiles, you know, most of these scenes, you know, kind of like, like happening in a room, right? And we all have a good feel for like, Room tiles are usually like, I don't know, what, a foot? I mean, in some of those bigger spaces, you got like those three-foot tiles or whatever. But um, the, you know, this thing here is way too big. So you got to dive in to the, to the tile a little bit. So if you double-click here or just click there. And so the bevel and grout is this thing here. And if you turn that down, like one and maybe three. There we go. Now we got clean lines. Right, and then you can also uh, change the global scale ten. Right, and then you have something that looks clean. You know, you could do something like that. Right, if you kind of look, and then also feel free to explore the world of tiles. All sorts of algorithms here for tile patterns. I like the hex. There we go. And that gives you a third color. And again, yeah, having something like this is going to be way too contrasty for like a background element in a render, right? Try to put the viewer's attention in the right place. So maybe all these tiles are just slightly different shades of gray, even less. Right, something like that provides an appropriate amount of detail, allows you to set some sort of reasonable amount of scale in this scene. And you know, isn't distracting the viewer from you know, whatever it is that you're doing that's actually interesting. Cool, all right, so a few things there in that one, Celeste. Let's see, is that everybody? Ba, 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 ba.
And we got T's. Good, that fell over. You got your wiggly person. And so T, you went and you went and set up your default file now. So you got this in the background. Like because all three of these have the same background. Do you have this like when you make a new file now, does this how it looks with the lights and everything? Yeah, yep. Yeah, the only thing here, I would turn down the shininess, or turn up the roughness on the background, because the, you know, the, when you render something like this, then you end up getting these like super contrasty lines here, right? Like, like this is super dark, this ends up being really bright, and if it's, if it's rougher, it won't be reflecting the light on the background quite as much. That's good. Looks like a balloon. Nice. Even got your planets in there. Cool. So this one here, that initial where they all come into place, right? You can get rid of that with that, what I was talking about with the tag. The, right, if I'm stacking a whole bunch of stuff, let's say this stuff. Linear, go, and oh, not that way. There we go, okay. Uh, right, and so we put the tag on here. And put the tag on here. Right, so I've got a, a stack of blocks, but I don't want to see this at the beginning, right? So I suppose the other approach would be just just edit this out. Just you know, once it gets into After Effects, just cut the clip so it starts there once everything's stacked up. But the other approach is that you could run it to here, and then select the tag, and come in here and say Set Initial State, and so now they'll start all stacked up and they won't fall into place. Right, because it's, it's gonna be really hard with the cloner to get them like, before the sim happens, to get them to like be perfectly stacked where they don't fall a little bit. Because uh, if they're, because you always want to default with them not touching, right? Because if they're touching, then they blow themselves up. It doesn't work. So there's that. Does that make sense, T? Selected, it doesn't do the sim, is that right? Um, like now it will. Before you have something selected. That, that's what I think I'm discovering. Yeah, it, it uh, works that way with the soft body thing. Uh, if you have it selected and it's rigid body, then it works. But if you have it selected with the soft body, yeah, it doesn't run. You have to deselect it and then it shows it to you. Because it's trying to show you the you know, if you select it, it's not just being a pain in the ass. Like, it's, I suppose it makes sense. Like, if you have it selected, it's assuming that you want to edit that thing. And so it's showing you the initial undeformed state, which is why it doesn't. I mean, they could turn that off when you hit play, but, you know, maybe next version. I don't know. But yeah, you have to just deselect in order to make sure the soft body 
runs at that point. Cool. All right. Let me see if I can find what I was talking about.
okay. I still care. So we want to pick, I'll let you guys pick. You know, we've been making, I don't know, what, four or five scenes and per thing. And then um, it would be too much given the time allotted to put all of them together. But picking maybe five or six that you were drawn to, that you can elaborate on and then set up some nice renders you know for adding to other reels or just for the time being we'll make a reel of just this kind of stuff you know just our simulation modeling and the closer you are you know the closer you're able to get with making the visual the viewport renders look good is that i mean what would we, what do we want to do now we want to you know select the scenes, you know, we'll say five, um, and then the, you're going to have two jobs. One is really um, tuning the sim, right, to make sure it's doing what you want. Maybe adding something extra and interesting to it, animation-wise, and then. Um, you know, deciding what it is that needs to happen in terms of um, making it look as good as possible, right? So we want to do the the real renders using Redshift, right? Real meaning R E E L renders, um, and but you know, before you send it off to Redshift, you know, wh we've been talking about this before. Right? What, why, why didn't I just tell you to keep using Redshift this whole time? It looks way better. We all know it looks way better. I told you not to use it up until now just for render time, right? So we could spend time thinking about what we're doing with the sim technique versus the render technique because we've talked about that previously. We'll continue to talk about it. But, um, but now that we're going to send it over there, things definitely need to be cached uh, before you send it to Redshift in order to make sure um, you know it's just our best uh, what's the word I'm looking for best practice cache this in before we send it over there uh, there's a few different people online the gentleman what's his name here Vincent Schwenk who did the previous Cinema 4D splash screen he a lot of his work is in you know sort of let's call it pretty sim language where um, you know it's animation that's kind of based on simulation stuff but you know then it's been made sort of visually compelling by obviously using you know higher fidelity textures and you know these are being rendered I don't know if he's using redshift or octane here in all of these but you know he's a c4d person you know, clearly making interesting things, having fun with this kind of technique, right? So, you know, he's a C4D person, so he just recently got all these great new rope and texture tools. You can see how those are all being used here. Let's scroll back in time a little bit. Uh, the one that was the splash screen is in here somewhere. Where he's combining some more keyframe, right? We all recognize this, right, from the splash screen previously. It's mostly keyframey, but there's another one. So visually, what can we, right? Um, what can we learn from this? Uh, simple 
right. the thing that he wants you to pay attention to, you know, is maybe glossy, maybe has you know two different textures on it. The background is not grabbing your attention, right? Fairly muted, um, complementary colors of some kind. So combination, this is like a reel of his, or at least two shots. I see a lot of this stuff in motion graphics work now, cable channel things, high dense. Squishing. All right, so kind of like what we did with some of the Jenga stuff. Camera movement designed to be a little more handheld feeling, kind of. It's very keyframey. Which is fine. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just like clearly how that's being done. So Max was on his way to a thing like this, right? Remember Max's last scene there he did with the squishy, squishy cubes where they kind of fell down and then they got pumped up by gravity? Definitely on his way there with that kind of look. So again, you could definitely spend some time exploring here. Vincent Schwenk. Um, there's some other people working in you know this kind of very mography sort of way, but let's look at one here. How we could do something. You know, turn this into more of an interesting um, shot that you know would show some sim-like animation, but um, also look good. So instead of dropping a bunch of individual pieces of rope, I think I want to have one piece of rope. So let's come in here and create that to start off with. And so I'm going to turn this off for a second. And then maybe come in here and something like that. And again, go ahead and set it to uniform. stuff off for now. And we'll simulate this. Cool. So we're kind of accumulating there. Maybe we do have multiple ones of those. And so remember we learned our lesson we're going to put it in the cloner. We want the tag up on the cloner, not down on the spline, because that's bad. It just doesn't work. Um, I'm going to say linear, because I want this to last a little bit longer. Let's say. Kind of like so. Cool. Um, does that work? Yes, if you. Um do you not need the sweep on the spline if you have a rope tag? I, I'm going to need the sweep to make it look like something. Yeah. This, this is, yeah, because the, the previous setup here, yeah, th this is okay. all going inside yeah. the sweep. I yeah. Didn't yeah, yeah. The, right now, but the thing, remember Max ran into this in his question, right? He said, I tried to put the rope sim tag on the sweep. It didn't work because it's not how it's designed to work. It's designed to work on the spline, not the geometry. Not the not the sweep. Because yeah, it's primarily wanting to do just the core of it, right? Not not it doesn't need to take into account like the 
outside versus the inside and, and all that kind of business. And so, um, so yeah, we'll sweep this now, maybe with the same setup. I'll dump this in here and say okay. And now, let's see how that goes. Cool. All right. That's going to be interesting and fun. But like we said before, we end up with a bunch of intersecting rope here. Why is that? Because the sweep is thicker than what the sim thinks it is. And so let's come back here. And how big is our sweep? It's n size is 5. Our sweep should be also 5. And so now it should at least not run into itself. Let's see. Segments to the cable. So this. I just, you know, I created a, I just created a spline. So how did you, how did you? Um yeah, you got to go into the, to the spline, and then whenever we're simulating these things, we're setting them to uniform, oh, oh, okay. and then, yeah, you know, okay. if you watch the, watch the subdivisions over there, yeah. you'll see it, dial up, or down, and so now, it might run a little bit slower. Yeah. Nibbly. Okay, cool. These things I think are interesting when they have, right, let's start to build something here that looks a little bit more interesting rather than having it fall into a cube. We'll have it fall onto a cylinder. And I think these things are interesting when there's like a, you know, even though they're short clips when possible, you know, what are we looking for? We're looking for applied knowledge here. Like, leverage your other ideas. So one two punch meaning that like I'll have it accumulate on this thing and then maybe half of it changes. So I'm gonna do it like this. We're gonna get gonna turn this off for a second. And we'll do a tube. And we'll put one of these inside. Like so yeah. We're gonna be fairly close to this. Now let's leverage all of the modeling knowledge to make this look as good as possible. I want this to look circular, so we're going to need way more subdivisions going around. There we go. I want this to look good too. There we go. These both need to be rounded. I'll just select both of them and Alt G. There we go. And uh, yeah, we'll just do like that. Cool. And I want the rope to accumulate on these things, right? So this gives me a more interesting stage, right? So as we can see in a lot of these things, the things that are on a stage, either the, the stage is, I would say your two options are make some sort of more interesting shape as a stage, or have it be completely seamless, where we just never see the edge of the stage, are the two more successful artistic approaches, I would say, here. So this is a collider. 
This is a collider. There we go. And so now my rope should accumulate on those things. I get some more interest here with things sort of falling off the edge. I think these need to be a little bit bigger given the size of what we're doing here. So, like that. This kind of like this. There we go. And maybe not quite that big, right about there. And then maybe this one's a little bit in, a little bit in. And so the one, you know, like the watching the sim happen is beautiful in its own way, but then giving it some additional level of interest halfway through might be interesting. And so what I'm going to do here is have the cylinder animate up. And so maybe about halfway here, we'll just set some keyframes on the cylinder. So just on the Y, uh, we'll animate the Y on the cylinder, and then it will move up on that keyframe. Cool, more interesting, right? Um, let's zoom out a little bit here. I don't think I want that gap in there. Let's close that a little bit. Cool, uh, great. All right, so I've got two things happening here. That happens. So that's just, you know, the other thing happening causes a lot of extra interest there. Okay, cool. Um, this is the, what essentially becomes my stage. Um, this is my rope, doing some housekeeping. This is gone, this is gone. I changed a bunch of stuff. I'm resaving the name of this file as rope. Real scene. There we go. Uh, this is no longer in play, right? These things are complicated enough. You don't need a whole bunch of junk over here that's like not doing anything, distracting you. Cool. Better. Um, let's get some. Let's make some camera decisions, right? So we want that cinematic camera movement. I'm going to uh, switch to Redshift now so that when I make a camera, it puts the camera tag on it. Does it put the camera tag on it? It may just crash. But I just saved the file, so I'm not too worried. There it goes. Okay. Cool. And I'm going to come in here. I do want to move this, but I kind of want it to circle all around. And so uh, I'm just going to make a target camera the hard way. So I'll just make a null. And then I'll right click on the camera and say animation tags target. Look at this null. This is camera target. There we go. Great. And so now uh, I can have this 
So animate slowly. Right, so now, again, keyed with all these things, please, linear keyframes on the camera movement. So we'll have the camera moving throughout the sim. So it's going to start maybe over here. Let's look through the camera. There we go. That needs to be higher up. Like that, maybe. Um, and so we will set a keyframe on the camera and then go to the end and move the camera slightly this way. There we go. You use the camera tag, you know, now I'm moving it. We're also like slightly zooming out, but also always keeping everything in the center of what we're doing here. And set a keyframe there. And now immediately go into keyframe mode and adjust the keyframes on the camera. And notice I'm not adding um, multiple camera keyframes, right? Just having the camera move throughout the shot. It's almost never having the camera change direction during the shot. Because that's easy to do in an animation program, but very difficult to do in real life. And so the, the cultural language is that if the camera changes direction, it cuts. It's a different shot. So it just doesn't look uh, great to do that. So again, I only have two camera keyframes. 90% of the time, this is what you want. You want a camera keyframe at the beginning of the shot, you want a camera keyframe at the end of the shot, right? If you're adding other camera keyframes in the middle, really stop yourself and you know ask why am I doing that? Okay, because chances are, unless there's a very specific reason that you've clearly thought out, it doesn't look good. Um, so here and here, our key properties on this are linear. There we go. And so now let's come back here and watch our shot in motion. Right, camera movement moves slowly and consistently throughout the entire shot. Nice. Uh, I want the, this is too far up in the frame. Since I did a target camera, this is easy to fix. I can just simply move the target and then also grab the camera here. And again, this is the most important camera parameter, the focal length of the camera, right? So by default, in Cinema 4D, we have this 35. I'm going to make it a little more zoomed in, 55. Remember, human eye is 50. So that's probably a good place to start most of the time. Now, like we said with the rope, we want the rope to be more smooth. I'll do the base level smoothing here and just turn up the long angle so that that looks more smoothed. If I look at it without, it may look jittery with the um, you know, polygons on. It's definitely pretty noodly. We're going to have to turn it down a little bit, but we're in the neighborhood now. I'm going to save. Cool. All right. So before I've done any redshift shenanigans, you know, I'm g this is solid, right? I'm, I haven't worried about any shaders or any junk like that yet. I just sort of, you know, got the pacing. I've got the sim dialed in. I don't want it to, to wiggle quite as much. So let's dial, let's adjust that first here. Let's respond to sim. I'm going to do two things. Control D. You know, I'm going to cache this before I go to do my redshift stuff. And so I'm going to just double my um, accuracy to cover some of that. And let's also turn the friction up 
let's see what 2 looks like in terms of not having it be quite as wiggly. And on the colliders, bounce down, friction up, maybe a little bit of stickiness. Nice. Okay. Um, I also want the, perhaps here at the end of the scene, just thinking about the target, I'm going to add some keyframes to the target. Set it by the end. It's right around there. Those I probably want to, is the camera's moving? Yeah, easing that I think is going to be fine. Yeah, that works. Cool. OK, now let's uh, save. And now Control D. I'm happy with where the cache is for right now, so or where the sim is, so I'm going to cache it in the tag here. Actually, uh, I do want to do one thing. I want the ropes to be different colors. So I'm going to hit C on the cloner so that they're separate ones. And then uh, I'll probably, there we go. I'll do it this way. I'm just going to control drag this three times and delete, 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 delete. What are you doing here? Just to make sure each one's a separate rope because I want to be able to apply different materials to each one. So I just took my hierarchy and deleted the other two splines rather than. Because we, we put this connect in there in this particular example so that it would all work. But now, come back in here. I'm going to clear the cache. There we go. This should still have sim. Yeah, that's good. And now we'll calculate the cache again. I just want to be able to put different materials on each one. So once it's cached, then I'll be able to scrub on the timeline. Also be advantageous. Cool. OK, now we're pretty good. Let's make sure, yeah, I already switched to Redshift here. Let's make sure our output is looking correct. We want the 
HD TV 1080 24 frames all frames that looks good cool um, now I'm gonna turn these things down and up while I'm working so I can get some faster feedback. I'll make sure my denoising is on. And save. And let's just get into the ballpark first. If you just type RS under materials, it gives you the defaults here. So, again, we want to draw attention to Okay, something to start with. Let's do our other redshift things. I want the dome light. grab the studio. So once we have this set up, Yeah, let's uh, ba -ba 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 look at the right window. So go to our view. Cool, getting somewhere. These corners are definitely want more rounded, so I've got that metal. Which one is this? Brushed. Let's put the other metal on here as like a contrast. There we go. And these corners. There we go. And that's better. And there we go. That's all looking better. Let's come into here. And yeah, so the dome light is giving us, you know, some reflections of like a studio there. As we rotate it, we could sort of, let's get them sort of stronger coming from the right side, kind of like that. Cool. And then I'd also like some actual lights. So we'll come into area light, make sure it says redshift area light. And yeah, there's no shortcut for redshift target light, which is irritating. I suppose you could just switch it later, but uh, we'll just make it. It's good practice. So, uh, target. And 
Uh, you could even use the same target that we use for the camera. So it points at the right thing. Cool. And uh, these need to be bigger, right? In general, you want your studio lights to be bigger, not smaller. It's going to give you softer looking shadows. But the size here does affect the amount of light coming into the scene. And I'm going to throw this placeholder material on these things. Let's sort of see how that's going. Looking better. Interesting. Good. Uh, I wanted different colors here of this. Let's do it ourselves. So I'll control drag this fabric and double click on it and follow this. Actually, I don't even need to be in the nodes. Uh, ramp here. So in these sort of situations, right, it's not just a particular color. Part of the reason it looks so good is there's like a Fresnel fall off here. And so the you have a darker one and a lighter one. And so the easiest way to do this um, is to change the middle one and then you can delete the other nodes and then just control drag a node and then control drag the node and then the bottom one you now know it's exactly the same color and you can just make it a little brighter and then if you know that this one is the same color you can make it a little darker there we go cool let's put that on here Cool. Pretty slow results here. I'm just going to say five passes. What's that looking like for me? Nice. So that's, f again, principles here. Smaller number, closer to one, is going to be faster to render. And again, making sure you want denoising on. Right? That's the big probably the checkbox should be like half the size of the screen if they were to properly communicate the importance of that checkbox. Um, cool, so I've got this one here. Um, now that this is properly set up, I'm going to uh, control drag a light around to the other side of the scene. Now, you gotta have it on either side of the camera, right? So over here-ish, this one is my more bright light, so we'll call this the key. And this one is the less bright light, less bright light. We'll call this the fill. And uh, yeah, I'll turn down the intensity on the fill a little bit. Okay, we're getting there. We don't want the black background. There is something in the dome light, I believe. We could see the studio in the background. That kind of gives us that. It's pretty muted. Our key light might be too too bright. Right, we don't want everything just sort of blown out over there on the right side. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. 
We're starting to get there. This metal. Let's grab one of them and make it. So we have our reflection, roughness, all things that we've adjusted before. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. This has a map in it. Something's shinier there. Let's make a new one from the fault. Redshift materials. We'll start just with the standard. There we go. And this has no roughness by default. Let's put it in the middle part. So on the cylinder. Cool. Now our roughness will turn down. Our metalness will turn up. There we go. So that's really like almost perfectly chrome. Give it a little bit more roughness. Cool, and some tiny detail. Let's go to the node editor. And you know, there are like the scratch maps in Substance, there's the scratch maps here. They don't have to be redshift. It's just a texture. Um, you know, it's just black and white, so that we're just feeding it into, into the channel there. So let's try this one. Yeah, we're not using a whole material, right? I made the default material, and just drag in a texture in. So it's just it's just uh, pixels, and we'll run that into our roughness. Let's keep an eye on this. You should be able to see maybe. Yeah, that gives us some. More interesting stuff happening there. All right. We now have like some tiny scratch detail on this. Actually, I like it better than that one. What if we put it on both? Super cool. The denoisings definitely kind of washing a little bit out. We may need a few more passes. better. And maybe a little denser. Two, two. Cool. That looks like a surface. 
Um, good. Now maybe just one more of these. Again, I was dialing down to under the color, which has the remap here. Find the color I like. There we go. And then again, control drag it over this way, control drag it over that way, get rid of this node. All right, this is particular to this. The cloth presets here have this more complex setup for the color. There we go. And let's see if that updates. It says rendering preview images. It's trying to make that a blue dot. Should be blue. We should have yellow, pink, blue. What are we missing here? Is the blue one not happening? Let's look up at the top. That one was just too far away. Because they're all the same color before. I didn't see that one was actually making it. Okay, well that's, I can go back and fix that later. But just in general, we're getting the render going here. Let's look at this again. Cool. So I've got you know, the surface that looks believable. This uh, light on the right still too, f still too strong. This is a lot of stuff blowing out to white, especially with this yellow. Cool. And so now. I've got something that would work and see where we're at in terms of render, render time. So that's all good. And final rendering, we'd want to be the same, not bucket, because it's going to change things. And um, we're going to say that we are. I'm not going to save right now. But we'll start maybe here. I don't think starting in the middle should be. Let's see what happens. It may shouldn't take too long because we cached the sim, so it shouldn't have to. It should just be able to pick up. Let's see how it does. Once you cache the sim, do you still need the tags, the sim tags on the? Still need the sim tags? Um, 
once you cash it, what's because then it's going to keep. I, I n n no, it? no, the the you see how they change an icon like it 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 um it, it stops oh. simulating. Yeah, like the icon shifts when it's it's yeah, the cloth shirt. That. Yeah, the cloth shirt before, and then once you cash it, it does that. Yep, that's not, why are we going through the floor there? You want to stop it? Yes. Save. Let's see if we get the same problem if we start at the beginning. So let's make a faster version. Okay, good. I mean, this is going to do its thing. I'm on the school computer, which is, you know, no slouch, but pretty good. And I'm at one second of frame, two seconds of frame, right? For getting a much more, much more high fidelity result here, right? I get the super nice reflections, all that sort of thing. And yeah, I'm doing it 640 by 360 right now. So that, uh, yeah, I mean, let's be real. This first pass on your reel is not going to be the final pass on the reel. So let's say, you know, setting that stuff up in Redshift is important, but do it at 640 by 360. Um, don't waste your time on the 1920 by 1080 version because inevitably we'll have some more changes. And, you know, if this, yeah, that might be up at five seconds a frame. But this is, this fits our window, right? Our window of like, how long does it, should it take to render things? Like I think a good plan is like overnight, right? If you can get it set up before you go to bed and then hit it, and then, you know, that gives you, depending on how long you sleep, five or six hours for it to render. But this is, this is one second a frame here. We're going pretty well. Ah, we're getting that uh, wobbliness here. I forgot. Since we're doing animation in Redshift, one more box to check. Boom. Uh, this one, one more box to uncheck, random noise pattern. We want to uncheck that so that the noise pattern stays consistent throughout the render. And that should be less wobbly frame to frame. Let's let it spit out some frames, and we should be able to see the difference. Um, you know, because the denoising uh, uses there's it's, it's it's engaging a noise pattern somehow in the um, in the well the in the amount of like tracing the lights around, tracing the photons around, there is an engagement with a noise pattern. And usually it changes, by default, it changes the noise pattern every frame, which gives you this sort of look for animation, where we get that wobbliness. So some of the wobbliness is coming from the denoise, some of it is coming from the random noise pattern. This should look, yes, way better. Right, we don't get that what kind of looks like stop motion what was happening before. Now we get this. I feel like we could push the fidelity a little bit more in terms of the how all of that's looking. Let's see where that puts us. These things aren't exactly linear. So if I came in here and said 20 passes, let's see where that puts it time-wise.
four seconds. Cool, so this is where we want to be going. We want to be making at least five shots in this reel where we've you know, gone through this process. You know, you've picked the ones that are most interesting to you, you've gone through and you've like really fine-tuned the sim, and then you've gone through and added animation, maybe given it that you know, something happening and then something else happening, and then setting up the, the Redshift pretty render so that we're gonna be able to make nice looking real of this different kind of sim work. If I grouped all of these together, oh, G, and then I should smooth the rope out. Yeah, just enough. Cool. 